Ladies and gentlemen, you inside the GGN News Network. We just dropping jewels, hanging out with my nephew, Michi Ship Junior. Yeah, yeah. AKA Pop in the Tupac All Eyes on Me movie coming to theaters in January. You understand? In 2017. <laughs> That's the day Snoop, Snoop got the date. <laughs> and these niggas is asking for something. You'll see all these comments right here, niggas like, nigga, you better give us a date. I'm giving you niggas a tentative date. That's like any, any nigga movie. The date gonna change, it may change. Dang. Let's just say it's coming soon. <laughs> If you don't know, you won't know. You inside the GGN News Network. I'm your host with the most finding Nemo, a.k.a. Nemo Hoes. And today I got a very, very, very special guest. One of my little homeboys, actor extraordinaire, musician by daytime, player by night. Huh. Ladies and gentlemen, feast your eyes on the man who will be playing Tupac in All Eyes on Me. Meech, Meech, let them know who you are, who you are, man. Tell them, man. Demetrius Ship Jr., man, live in the GGN with Uncle Snoop. Believe that. In a real way, yeah. long time coming. This young man right here is an exceptional actor, and you will be able to see him on screen in the Tupac, All Eyes on Me, um, movie that was shot by Benny Boom, L.T. Hutton. It's an excellent movie. I had the privilege of seeing it, and I just want to tell you ahead of time, you did your thing. You did some Academy Award winning shit man, in my that. eyes. And I could tell that you really put your work in. It wasn't handed to you that you really went and did all the things you had to do to get prepared for that. I certainly appreciate that, for real. So what, what gave you the, the will to want to play Tupac other than looking like it? Uh, man, it was the opportunity. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And when the opportunity to come knocking, bro, you, you got to be ready. And full steam ahead. Can't be playing, kicking back, playing no games, or it's going to pass you by. So, many people may not know, but your father was in the music industry right. for many years when right. you was a baby, probably before you was born, too. Right. So, what do you attribute that to who you are nowadays from being around Pops and being around the game at such an early age? Man, to always go out and get it, man. Don't you know what I'm saying? Like, I've seen Pops grind. I've been at the studio with him to 6 in the morning. You feel what I'm saying? I, I watched that. and to to especially try to provide for his family and make that happen. He did that, you know what I'm saying? So I got kids, I'm a father myself, so that's definitely something. We made it a must that when we had babies to be there, to yeah. call to call a duty to be in the action with our kids. Like I had my son around everything I did. Yeah. Like the same way with him, like that's, yeah. that was a must. And I feel like those are traits that give you that edge that you have right now. That's why you was able to steal that role and and kill that role right and and eventually do other things that you know gonna parallel your career to another level definitely because i it's it's funny i remember death row days you know what i'm saying like being there as a kid and it, i wasn't lonely but like six or seven years old but i remember vividly being there i remember certain parts of the the, the studio the back room that's where i used to always be at in the back on the drums or in the mm -hmm. back in the kitchen you feel me and you brought a lot of the the same energy and body language of my friend tupac yeah. When I watched it, I seen my friend on screen. Like, when you talk to your mom, yeah, yeah. the way his, him and his mom relationship was, I was able to know that relationship. His mama was my friend. Mm -hmm. Like, he was my friend. Yeah. So to see the dynamics of how y'all communicated on screen, that was, man, that was beautiful, man. It was heartfelt for me. Like, I cried a couple times on the inside watching the way y'all talked on screen, the way you had love for him, was there for him. Hey, yo, and, and I heard uh, that you and Daz already had, you and y'all was already cool before Pac got to death row. Yeah. And y'all was pr uh, pretty much part of the reason he came. Tupac was my friend before he came to death row. I met him at the rap party for Poetic Justice. My homegirl, Samora Jenkins. Um, actually, it's the same night I met Michael Rapper party. Mm -hmm. We at the rap party. So Ricky Harris get me in the, the little backstage area, so they got a mic. Mm -hmm. DJ started DJing. Tupac grabbed the mic. He started rapping. I grabbed the mic, I started rapping, but I'm rapping aggressive, because at this time I'm like one of them like battle rappers, so I'm yeah, aggressive. Yeah. So he come back, he aggressive, and it sound like we kind of like battling each other. <laughs> so it was like we get off to like a wrong start, but yeah. you could tell we both dope as a motherfucker, so it was like mm -hmm. we not really gonna go there. So when we finished rapping, 
We go outside. I'm like, nigga, my name's Snoop. He like, my name Pop. And he break up on a blunt. And that nigga roll a blunt with me. That's my first time ever hitting a blunt. And I met him that night. We exchanged numbers. That's great. And started hanging out, kicking it. So when I did the Murder Was a Case soundtrack, he had a song called um, uh, Take a Look in My Eyes. I don't even know the name of the motherfucker, but I wanted the song. Mm -hmm. So I paid him for me to do the song. And the song didn't even come out. And he got paid. And Suge was like, man, why you pay that nigga? And he ain't even on the label. I'm like, man, that nigga's a star, man. So when he got locked up, I told Suge, because we had did this show at the Source Awards. I'm like, man, we need this nigga on our team. Because he was in the cell. If you watch the Source Awards when we was into it with the East Coast, everybody came out of a cell. Mm -hmm. And it was an empty cell, but it had a Tupac billboard in there. Because we was representing him. Mm -hmm. Because of me, he wasn't even signed to Suge and didn't even know the nigga back then. That's crazy. So it was like, that was my friend and I felt like he needed to be with us because we was the most gangster label, we had the best sound, and it just felt like it was supposed to be with, he was supposed to be with us. Right, right. That's what's up. Right Magic. Here. That's dope. Yes, and they definitely put that in the movie. So when that, that all happened, I'm like, damn, that's crazy. It was just so much stuff that I ended up learning about him that I didn't know it, and a lot of people really don't know. What about your production side as far as music? Is that something that you aspire to oh, do? Oh man, that's, that's been the life thing, man, and that's what he's put in, instilled into me as far as just as a kid. I, I seen Pops in the studio, man, that's all I wanted. I just knew that was coming. I, I knew that was set up for my life. Like, I'm, a, I'm doing exactly that. I'm gonna produce, you feel me? This is, I'm gonna have this type of life. I'm gonna live like this. So that's always what I wanted to do as a kid, and just as the years, you know what I'm saying, I started getting a little older. That's when I started taking it more serious, cause you know what I'm saying you can play with it here and there, but when it's time to get it done, yeah. you got to get in there and get it done. It just don't come to you no matter what it is. Hi, I'm Stormy Friends reporting live from Sacramento. It's been so hot, I'm scorching wet. Everybody's dripping. We all have to throw water bottles on each other. So everybody, get your water bottles. Stay close. <laughs> yeah, that's gonna, that is gonna happen. I'm so sorry. I'm trying to keep them a little. Trying not to. Move them too much, keep them in there. Well, they could jiggle, but hold on, just might whip. When I seen the movie, man, I was I was really, really impressed. I was really impressed, thoroughly impressed. LT brought me a rough copy over here first, and it was everywhere. The shit was all over the place. It was like he didn't have it organized. It just yeah. was seen here, seen here, seen there. It was like you really couldn't. Right, right, put, put it all together. And that nigga had me come to that motherfucking thing, and it was when it came on with the storyline and the this and that. And, Music I was that motherfucker that. like, ooh, if a motherfucker move wrong and made too much noise, I wanted to sock a nigga. Shut up, nigga. I don't want to make no lines. <laughs> that shit was good. Yeah, I think I was there, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was my first time saying it. that shit was good, dog. Yeah, appreciate that. Man. Real it's, good. It's crazy. I can't wait to see what's going to happen, like how the world going to respond. The response so far, like just with the second trailer, though, been dope. It's been crazy, man. It's, it's, it's one thing to get the role and like, man, I'm be getting there and doing all that. But then it's another thing to get the reception and the people, you know what I'm saying, on, on all across the social media and everything. And everybody inboxing me like, man, you you look like you killed it. Amazing yeah. job. And just a, and just for people like you that's seeing it in these screenings. Yeah, nigga. That's, and I'm, and it's, I'm it's telling crazy. you, I'm telling you, as a fan of of movies, mm -hmm. as a friend of Tupac, and a fan of the game, you did that. Yeah, like that was my friend. Tupac was my friend, man. Like. I go to this nigga house, man, nigga cooking fish and mm. shrimp with all the homies in the living room. Me, him, and MC Breed was was a tandem with this getting this weed shit because mm. I had the hookup. So it's a relationship that was crazy that when I see you on screen, it's like you you got it right. You got that shit right. Yeah. You got it right, right. I got to do this little game with you, though. You know, on my shit, I got a nice little game. Right, right, right. This shit is called Inside the Smoker Studio. Everyday people, aka real nigga shit. I'm gonna ask you some questions and you can answer to the best of your ability. All right. What's the first thing you do or think of when you wake up? I probably grab my phone, Snoop. I gotta be honest. You just like 97,000 niggas in America. Hot or cold? Hot. I hate cold. Chicken or steak? Chicken. Come on. In and out or fat burger? Come on now. In and out, bro. <laughs> Favorite pair of shoes all the time? I would say the Jordan 12s. Favorite cereal? Cinnamon Toast Crunch. Nigga, please. What? What you gonna say, bro? Don't say no off the walls. Nigga, I was gonna say motherfucking, uh... Frosty Flakes? No, uh, uh, what's my Cap'n Crunch with the berries? Cap'n Crunch berries. That's oh. like number three on the list, bro. 
See, I'm old school, nigga. When they first came <laughs> out, nigga, that was impeccable. Nigga, when they first came out, see, y'all got a whole new dose of sugar, nigga. When that sugar first came <laughs> out in our era, and Cookie Crisp, bro, nigga, you, Cookie you, Crisp. Snoop, you had Cinnamon Toast Crunch? Nigga, yes, I did. But All right, but you, like, so you still, is it just because that's what you started with? Yeah, you know, when you, right. you, when you start with something, your mouth is fixed that way. Man, the era we come from, they had that strong sugar. So when you, that, when the, nigga, that Cookie Crisp would change the whole milk to nigga grayish brown. <laughs> <laughs> nigga, when you get to the bottom of the bowl, you like, <laughs> nigga, turn the whole bowl up, <laughs> nigga. Nigga, brown, brown milk, nigga. I ain't lying. Man, I already know it. That's hilarious. Man, please. Y'all ain't have it like we had it. Y'all got that uncut sugar. We got that shit. Favorite drink? Hennessy. Weekends or weekdays? Weekends, baby. I'm Ass or titties? Damn. I only can have one? Yeah. Shit. Come on, man. This should know whatever you answer. This ass, man. I would have said both. That's what <laughs> I want to say. That's why I asked, could I? <laughs> Don't let me sway your answer. Your answer is your answer. We're on a game show right now. I'm All just right. the host. All right. How many times a day do you think about sex? Eight. Apples or oranges? Apples. Red apples. Not green. Green is white. Vanilla ice cream or chocolate ice cream? Chocolate. Chocolate. For sure. Chocolate. Mm. Weaves or extensions? Neither. Straight up. <laughs> show me the natural you, baby. I you got a little fade. Whatever you got, bring it to the table. Make sure it's straight. So you want to be able to do this? Exactly. Not. <laughs> and she doing this shit exactly. all the <laughs> I was just about to do it, bro. <laughs> Where, hey, Bitch, man. if you don't stop hitting your motherfucking head. Where, hey, got to wake up to that <laughs> scarf. Not, none of that, man. I can't, can't do that at all. But you know what's crazy? I be waking up with that scarf on. <laughs> <laughs> I was trying to protect my shit. That's called wrapping your head when you protect it so you oh, can make sure man. you don't have to get it done again. And then sometimes they be sleep like this too. <laughs> <laughs> so they, <wear> their, <laughs> they don't fuck up either side of their shit, you know what I'm saying? That's a, that's a technique that you, that you learn with the hair game. To be able to sleep like this. <laughs> if you could have a superpower, what would it be? Jumper. Remember you seen that movie? Teleport. Oh, Teleport, yeah, oh, yeah man, that, you, that'd be my joint right Disappear on the bitch. Man. If you were stuck on the island for a whole year and could only listen to three albums, what would they be? You on the island? Remember, you on the island, so you may get some uh, some gorilla pussy or some. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's, it's, it's something weird coming at you, but you gonna end up screwing because you're gonna be there for a year. <laughs> so you going to have something for every mode, some some thug music to back to motherfucking. Oh man! The late night animals off. Cause I'm old, cause I wouldn't even. Now you gotta uh, do what you got. You on the I, island, I'm nigga. Do, I'm gonna do Anita Baker. I'm gonna do Jay Z, Reasonable Doubt. Mm -hmm. And remember, you on the island, nigga. This is an island where it's animals and snakes and reptiles and all kind of shit. And at night they come out. Damn, what is one more? I do R. Kelly Chocolate Factory, just in case one of them. them uh, Chocolate Factory? Yeah. He went hard on that album. Certainly. This right here is called Finish the Sentence. I'm gonna start it. You finish it. I always wake up. Thankful. If I could work with anybody dead or alive, I'd want to work with. Uh, J. Cole. If I could see anybody perform dead or alive, I'd want to see. I see everybody. So I'll say pop. I look for blank in a woman. Loyalty. If I wasn't a boss, I'd be a? A boss. My favorite position is? Hey. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> All of them. My name is Demetrius Ship Jr. and I'm a? Uh, I'm an actor slash producer slash father and uh, yeah. There That's you it. have it. You heard it from him, Demetrius Ship. Entrepreneur, all of that. Yeah, conglomerate. You understand me? Using big ass words and shit. Right. That neither one of us can spell. I can spell that though for sure. Spell conglomerate. C O N G L O M E R A T E. Certainly, conglomerate. Thanks. <laughs> I'm gonna have to check with my judges. <laughs> I'm sorry, Meech, we're going to have to check with our judges. Where, who's the... <laughs> You're moving a little bit too fast with giving yourself credit for... And my judges have not had time to even review the letters that you chose. Ding, 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 ding. Right. Certainly. You got it right. Next one, arithmetic. Oh, uh, come on, Snoop. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I ain't never took that class, so... <laughs> Shit, I don't know. 